Hello, this is Turnips and Tornadoes. I'm Joanne. I'm Dan. What are we making today? Today we're making something. We've got tomatoes coming off the vines. A week ago we didn't have hardly any, maybe no. none. I can't remember. About a week ago they started producing and now we have quite a few. Yeah, on first green tomatoes. Top. Yeah. And then, of course, we did the fire green tomato to oh, yeah. uh, video. And then now we're looking for things to make. Somebody suggested that we make... Uh, Salsa. Salsa. Yeah. You've got onions. And you didn't grow the pepper. Did not. I did grow the onion. Okay. Grew the tomatoes, obviously. I guess that's it. Um, and then we're going to do a little variation. In the past, we've made mango salsa. It's probably been our favorite salsa. This year, we uh, about a few days ago, we went down to Porter, Oklahoma, and got Porter peaches. If you're from Oklahoma, if someone says Porter, Porter peaches, they know exactly what you're talking about. They're exactly. so good. There are other places that produce them, but they are the most famous, and Here. we can attest yeah. that yeah. they are yeah. um, quite good. Yes, yeah. so it's going to be peach salsa. So easy, really no cooking today, which is also good for summertime. No heating the oven, no Absolutely. heating the Absolutely. Stove top. So okay, okay but I'm going to well, go Well, let ahead. me start this. Spanish translates the word salsa, Spanish translate in English to dip. And it, yeah. That's kind of certainly a dip. is a dip. So yeah, absolutely. That. And the I salsa love it. dance, which yeah, <laughs> we're not going to do. We should have practiced. We should have practiced we our dance. We missed it. Uh, let's see. Emerged from Cuba, musical influences became kind of a global phenomenon. Some data says it dates back to the early 1900s. Cuban uh, musical influences, uh, but the Latin dance styles date back to Afro-Cuban way back to Ooh. 1690. Wow. Right, and it became wow. really a bit of a, a dance style in the 1900, but there's a lot of uh, different information about mm -hmm. that. So we're not going to be doing the dance, unfortunately. At least not on camera. <laughs> uh, but uh, so anyway. Okay. So we got the chips ready. We just need yep. to dip. What do yep. robots like to dip in their salsa? What? Microchips. Oh my gosh, I should, I should have guessed that one. Oh no. okay. okay, how do we begin? I am going to, I've washed the tomatoes, and since we're not using store-bought tomatoes, our tomatoes have some imperfections. I'm going to go ahead and take those off, and then ask you to go ahead and um, cut these up. We're just going to cut them up, and then really with salsa, you can cut them however you want, but I'd say diced. And you could use your food processor to chop up everything pretty severe but we're going to use a knife also if you used to grocery store tomatoes and they're perfect. perfect they look like baseballs that are red i mean just everything's um in proportion homegrown tomatoes usually don't look mm -hmm. that good that's right so if you go to the farmer's market you might say well that looks a little different well this is how nature makes them they're going to have right. their little flaws and their bumps and things like that you cut it out and they are still so much better so much better also we got to talk about heat because there's many ways to make salsa and mm -hmm. those that are watching this have the way their mama made it or the way mm -hmm. that they like it or their favorite restaurant makes them a million different ways to make it we're going to show mm -hmm. you how we do it and this may vary too depending on how hot the pepper is right for sure absolutely and what, yes what kind of pepper i bought one huge jalapeno pepper, and I'm kind of guessing it's going to be mild. You, you don't know, except I? Si I'm well. Let's cut a little piece <laughs> off and not hurt yourself. <laughs> Neither one of us care for much heat, okay. so yeah, I'll just cut a little piece. I've already washed it and all that. This big knife, do you recommend? Yeah, what it, on that it doesn't matter. Okay. Whatever. As long as I don't cut myself. So again, everyone's got their own secret ingredient and recipe, kind of like sure. chili. You talk, yeah. you go to a chili cook-off, and everybody's got their own secret ingredient. Right. I judged a chili cook-off um, one time. They had some celebrity uh, judges, and uh, so I was eating meat back then. And so anyway, the guy's secret ingredient was squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. Was it good? It actually was good. Oh, my god! It was good. My parents, uh, you know, my stepdad, he ate squirrel. Uh, you know, they they did whatever they could growing mm -hmm. up just to, you know, put food on the table for the kids. Right, and right. so they had it. Um, and, uh, you know, it 
tasted pretty good. That's so funny. So I can say that I Did I've you had... know it was squirrel before you no, started eating it? No, he didn't tell us. He said it was a secret ingredient. <laughs> and uh, That was pretty nice. He didn't win, but it was darn good. Oh, good. Uh, but everyone's got their own little, I'm going to put a couple of clams in here. I'm going to put venison in here or whatever. All right, I took the uh, ribs out best yeah, I could. Yeah, the ribs and the seeds have the most heat. And I would just cut a tiny piece and taste it to okay. see. And our backup or addition is going to be a can of mild green chilies. I love these. Okay. I love these. And as I'm cleaning these tomatoes up, I'm also kind of squeezing, bless you, Excuse squeezing me. some of the seeds out. You could, you don't have to do this. Also on the tomatoes, sometimes, I used to do this a lot, I would drop them for about 25, 30 seconds into boiling water, mm -hmm. then plunge them into ice water, and then the skins just slip right oh, off. Oh, okay. But there's a lot of nutrition in the seeds. I am not gonna do that today. Okay, you wanna go for it? No. Nope. Me too? It's a very small piece. Yeah, I really am thinking it's not gonna be very. You're right, it's pretty mild. Pretty mild, so is that what you want in it? Yeah, Okay. it's a, it's a bigger piece. I'll just slowly get bigger until I can't speak. Oh, that's not bad. Okay, that's Again, what I... it's the ribs and the seeds. I, I am not a pepper person much, um, so I probably don't know what I'm talking about, but it seems to me the bigger and thicker the cell, that the wall, what would you call this, the yeah. walls of the pepper are, the less hot they are. Now, you want these pretty small pieces, I'm guessing. Very, very small, even uh, smaller than the tomatoes. Okay. Whoa. Very good. Uh, garden's coming along well. As mentioned, the tomatoes, we pulled a lot of green beans, froze most of them, then got a canner, canned like four pints, and then they started playing <laughs> And then they out. were over. <laughs> so it's early enough in the season that we replanted. Um, so we're going to see how the other ones, they already popped up out of the ground. We replanted like a week ago, and like two, three days later, the seeds had already sprouted. So we got the room also that we had, had a couple of tomato plants that weren't producing. So we put some uh, ground cherries in. We had fun mm -hmm. with those last year. Yes. We never did on the channel, but you can look those up. They're not technically cherries, but... Mm -hmm. um, I think it, is it called, is it, I think some places call them gooseberries. Gooseberries. But I might be wrong So look it. those up. We're gonna grow those again. And then Kajari melons, not technically mini watermelons, kind of what they look like and quite frankly, even taste like. But we grew those last year. We didn't really know what we're doing. I think we made some mistakes mm -hmm. by possibly overwatering. Mm -hmm. um, but those grew to, you know, baseball to softball size. And they're beautiful. And they they're are the beautiful. beautiful so look those up. Kajari, how do you spell that? K A J A. R I, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I think are they from India? I think. I thought they were from Africa. Okay, but I could maybe. Be wrong. May very well be. Once they Ooh. look it up, they will know. Am I doing it wrong? You will. You are going towards your hand. You usually do it away from <laughs> your hand. And also, if you'll put it down, and then later, what you can do is chop, chop, chop. Right. So you don't have to worry about them being real tiny okay. now. I don't like this knife. It's too big. Okay. Yeah. If I'm going to cut myself. You want, me, you want to smaller. trade, and you do the tomatoes yeah, I'll see now. That. Let's do that. All right. Are we just going to trade yeah, sliced we'll places? Sides. Yeah. We can do work. our own little salsa here if you want to. And uh, There you go. So you want these little. Yeah, and I use, we're using a, a Cherokee purple. Um, I, I can't remember what the red one was called. And then, I, I can't remember what this one's called. Either. A yellow, a red, and a Cherokee purple. So okay. we can have different colors. You use what you have. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I just like, if you have different colors, it's nice to vary the color a little bit. So a food processor would make this? I think it would just, just it would be very difficult. Them, it, would I, it would make it liquid. It would not give it the texture I would prefer. Okay. Yeah. When you go to a restaurant and get salsa, uh, sometimes you have no idea how much work that went into that uh, to get all the stuff ready yeah. for you to sit down and get salsa served at your table in five minutes. And the more you cook, the more you appreciate uh, restaurants sure. and all the work that they do. And some restaurants use, and some families use, and I have two in this winter, canned, really good canned um, tomatoes. Yeah, tomato paste. Nope, 
just no. it's canned tomatoes. You just like roasted and tomatoes, roasted. I do like fire roasted tomatoes fire roasted a lot. Fire roasted tomatoes, that would make good ones. Yeah, and actually, it makes pretty good salsa. And I kind of suspect that a lot of restaurants may use that because they don't have them. It's hard to pay someone to sit and do what we're doing. It um, is. And they probably do. They're probably better at using the um, food processor. Yeah, they've got the right blade and they know the yeah. speed to get exactly. They do that every day, and they do gallons yeah. and gallons. Yeah. Of it. We're, uh, this recipe is going to produce a smaller portion, obviously mm -hmm. make it and double it or triple it, depending on your yes. family or your company yes. that you have. Uh, what are some of the other things as we're doing this that are going to be in this, other than the tomatoes and peppers? Uh, onion. Onion. We've got a, a white onion from our garden. I would probably prefer a red. We didn't grow any red. Oh, and we did grow the garlic also. We had the grand total of one garlic plant survive the winter. That's unusual for us. Usually they do really well. I think I kind of forgot to to water them. That's not good. But that was that. This is from our garlic. So garlic, and then we're gonna have the peaches, and then and let's see what else. And then we're gonna do some things to give it some flavor, extra flavor. We talked about keeping a running total, not on the cherry tomatoes, but on the normal uh, tomatoes. And I just went and checked. I think we're at 37. Wow. It doesn't so far. seem we like that. That's, 37. that's crazy. Well, two or three we harvest yeah. in the morning, and it yeah. just adds up after a while. So 37. And I think that includes the few green tomatoes we yeah. picked also that we yeah, made that green, we used, green tomatoes. Uh, yeah, for the channel. Yeah. And, uh, and if you've made it other times as well. That's true. Yeah. But if they're not good with the knife. Yes. You don't want really any nine-finger children. Around, <laughs> Rather uh, not. Or husbands that are not necessarily good with a knife. <laughs> if they were older children, that's, you know, it's good to teach them knife skills, yeah. but definitely and you older. Don't, so you don't need, you can make this without uh, the stove, without any heat, right? Yeah, there's no need. And then at after all. you make it, we you can eat it, but you like it to sit a while. Yeah. And mold a little bit. Not for, mold. Mold. <laughs> <laughs> Not mold. What do you do when you put it in it? Meld. Okay. Meld. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, all right. I know you like it to sit a while. Yeah, it's good. It's okay at first, but it tastes better. And this will keep in the fridge probably three or four days. And if I had super, super juicy tomatoes, I would, I might would put a tiny bit of tomato sauce in them or tomato paste, but not very much because you don't want a, that canned taste to be real strong in them. But that can thicken them up. I don't think we're going to have to do that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to move on with the onion. You probably don't want to cut up onion because that's not very fun. Um, I'm just here for the dance. We just finished uh, curing all our onions. Yeah, and uh, you did that an interesting way. I posted that up on some of our social media, but if you didn't see that, uh, so you can pull them and then immediately cut them up and eat them, right? Oh, absolutely. But to uh, cure them. To, to, to give them longevity. Longevity. You have to cure them. So you had some out on the back porch hanging up mm -hmm. for a while. It got a little sunny back there, so we're looking for a place. We rarely use our dining room, so uh, you put some paper down mm -hmm. and then let them dry out there. Yeah. Put a fan on. Put a fan on it so they would Turn air it out over every couple of days. And then you did the pantyhose trick. Yeah. Uh, um, so I've got a picture that we're showing right now of the pantyhose, and. That's in the guest bedroom. Yes, just hope closet. no one opens the closet. <laughs> Open the one year I cured some garlic in there. I will never do that again. That was a mistake. That room smelled like garlic for months and months. But the <clears throat> company didn't stay long. So <laughs> it was oh, gosh. not necessarily a bad thing. But There you go. And now I'm going to put the garlic in. What are you doing now? Why are you smashing it? Uh, it's just... It kind of gets you started on getting them into, you know, dicing them. Okay. I like my garlic in very small pieces and something like this. Okay. If I were making maybe Italian food or something, I might would just smash them like that and throw them whole in the dish and then take them out. Some parts of Italy, that's real common. They don't really eat the pieces of garlic so much as they flavor the pan with it and, then, and then remove it. Okay, I have a lump of uh, tomatoes here. Okay. 
So you need to try to... Yeah, do it with this. This will do it a lot easier. Cool. Okay, I'm dumping the garlic in. Cool. I also ask on social media some other things for to ask you to try to make. We had a lot of different suggestions. Some of them you had never made before, like a lemon pie. I, you... I made that... Hey, you have made it, okay. Uh, uh, decades ago, li okay. literally decades ago. So it's been a long, long time. Um, but that's where we get uh, the ideas for some of these. In fact, this, uh, what we're making today was somebody suggested, why don't you make some salsa? Yeah. So we thought, hey, we got all the stuff. Why not make salsa? Yeah. So that's, so any, any suggestions, any comments uh, are welcome. Yeah. And a little hint, don't ever cut your peach and then try to peel it. This isn't working very well. Okay. <gasps> oh, so it's going it, to work. Peel it first. Peel it first. Okay. Definitely. That's a good tip. Definitely. I'm going to go get, I've lost so much peach, I'm going to go get another peach here in a minute. And, and so far as how much peach, it's how much you want in it. And how many chops is how thick your salsa is going to be, right? Yeah. That is so true. We went to, gosh, 30, 40 years ago. My mom lived out in California, and they took us to an authentic uh, Mexican restaurant. And uh, so we, you know, we have Mexican restaurants around here, and we, uh, you know, we think we know what an enchilada should taste like, a taco should taste like, and things like that. These were uh, authentic yes. uh, Mexican dishes. They looked and taste nothing like... Nothing like... Uh, this stuff that we eat. I guess we eat more Tex-Mex or whatever Yeah, call it. I would say so. But it was delicious. Yeah. It was just incredible. Yeah. They do so much with so little. I mean, just basic ingredients of beans and tortillas and... But they cook them up in a way that was just so filling and so mm -hmm. delicious and so mm -hmm. flavorful. And uh, so that was really our first exposure to real uh, Mexican restaurant. Right. And then after that, we went to a to Mexico for a vacation, just you and I. Mm -hmm. And that was back in the days of uh, travel agents being more mm -hmm. prevalent. And we told a, the travel agent we wanted to go to an area of Mexico that was not a big tourist spot. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the name of that town? Uh, What's Ixtapa, the name? Ixtapa, Zihuatanejo. Yeah. Uh, down there. Anyway, it was... Really amazing. It wasn't touristy much then. I think so now it probably is. But uh, it was really good. And it was totally different. We would order, I remember we ordered fajitas. It was nothing like <laughs> fajitas that we, I would have never recognized. It turned out it was a tourist place, but it was a tourist place for the Mexican families. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It, we, it was. We went by a bank. And I, the things that you remember are interesting. We went by a bank, and they had uh, literally armed guards, like with like machine, machine gun guns out in front of it. And I guess they were to keep people from robbing it, or uh, I don't know, protecting people that had just made a withdrawal. I don't know, but you don't see that uh, here in the <laughs> no, states. No, no. Uh, made us a Two guys nervous. in uniform, uh, just out guarding that bank. Isn't that wild? And we found out later that the president of Mexico at that time had a beach home just barely down the beach from uh, our hotel. Yes. And so even on the, do you remember, even on the beach there were yes. guys with, um, what did you call that guy? Well, they were machine with guns. Machine guns. And we were like, whatever, oh I my mean. gosh. Uh, and we told someone, we ran into an American couple and hung out with them some and we said, does it make you guys nervous that there's all these machine guns around? And he said, oh, no, if anyone ever attacked you, they would shoot them in a minute. I was like, that doesn't make me feel better. No, no. Oh. They're here to protect you. Uh, so I'm guessing we're not going to use this since I chopped up the... Well, it depends on just how much peppers right. do you want it. What we can do is taste it, and then if we decide we want more peppers... We'll open that can and put more We've not mentioned proportions. They're going to be on the uh, recipe yeah. posted as the first comment at the end. But just know that this is to taste. If you've got more for tomatoes sure. and, you know, for whatever. Sure. Are you happy with this or I is am. it too? I am very happy with that. I'm going to run over and get another peach since I messed that one up. I think I want a little more peach in that it. That sounds good. That sounds good. So, um, 
don't have any public appearances coming up anytime soon. We uh, will try to or order some more coffee cups. People have been asking about coffee cups and t-shirts and we'll do our very best to try to get that going. But uh, right now it's uh, just trying to listen to what you guys want and try to do that. Somebody suggested we do more weather. Since we really yeah. haven't done, I'll try to do a couple of weather episodes, uh, depending on what you want to talk about, what causes lightning or uh, the tornado belt shifting further to the east or just whatever you want to talk about. Uh, oh, that's starting to look kind of colorful. Look oh, at it. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, tell us something about summer and well, weather. I will be happy to do that. Uh, summers uh, seem to start sooner and are lasting later and have gotten a little hotter. And some people will say uh, it's slowly edging into a period of what it's going to be. But let me tell you, the weather is cyclical. So we do have periods of very intense mm -hmm. weather. It doesn't mean that it's always going to be that way. We'll say that. And uh, we'll start to see the peak of summer happen a little bit sooner. So everything varies depending on the weather pattern we're in, a La Nino or an El Nino. And these are weather patterns that can cause the steering currents to bring in more storms that are a little more intense, a little bit more frequent. Uh, so weather is constantly changing. You know that if you watch on television on Monday, the 10 day forecast, and then you watch on Tuesday and Wednesday, you're like, wait a minute, what, what happened? I thought there was gonna be upper 90s and now it's upper 80s or whatever. So the weather is constantly evolving the television people do the very best they can with the data that we have, mm -hmm. but the data is changing. And I always explain it to when I'm talking to students and things like that. It's like an accountant trying to solve a problem, but the numbers are constantly changing. So the solution that your favorite weather person has on Monday is going to be different than the data that they have on Tuesday. So again, you do the best you can with the data, but when you go back to when I started, uh, in the late 70s and early 80s, there were four-day forecasts. That's so crazy. No wind forecast, no pops, probability of precipitation. I did not uh, realize that. Yeah, there was I... no pops. You'd just put a chance of rain Tuesday, ah. but it wasn't a.m. or p.m. or heavy or thunderstorm. pops mean what? Probability of precipitation. Mm -hmm. um, so things have changed. It's gotten better, but uh, as the data has gotten better, the expectations have gotten mm -hmm. even higher. So you want to know Saturday. Can I go to the lake? Is it going to rain in the morning? Is it going to rain in the evening? Is it going to be heavy? Is it going to be passing showers? When's it going to start? When's it going to stop? Yep, and how much? <laughs> and so uh, anyway, the expectations have exceeded the science. Uh, so some of that probably is the promotion department telling you how wonderful we are. Um, <laughs> but uh, the reality is the forecasts are much more accurate than when they were 10 or 20 and certainly 30 and 40 years ago. So the forecasts are better, but they're still going to be wrong, okay? <laughs> your, your favorite weather person is going to be wrong from time to time because data changes and we're not as smart as God. So uh, that's kind of what uh, the weather people do is do the best they can with the latest data. And the stuff you see on the air is kind of the solution to the problem, mm -hmm. the very end, mm -hmm. but the process may take two or three hours mm -hmm. uh, to generate those numbers. So I have much more respect because I know what goes into a forecast. Yes. So there you have it. I love it. I love it. That's colorful. It is colorful. And I just put half of a lime, the juice of half a now, lime in the there. these are the peach? These are the peaches. And we're going to, let's see, give me the salt and pepper. We definitely want salt and pepper. And normally I put about a teaspoon, and of course this is according to how you like it and, and what volume you're dealing with. But normally I like a pinch of sugar in it, mm. but I'm not. Let me show this shot. Isn't that beautiful? That <laughs> is beautiful. But I'm not going to because we have a lot of peach in here. So I'm going to hold off until we can taste of it. Um, I saw one recipe that had like cilantro or something. Oh, I have in cilantro. It. Thank you. That's it. You don't have to have cilantro. That was a hint. Uh, thank you. That's <laughs> awesome. You saw it. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to wash it right quick. Okay. That is funny. This is your scrap bowl here that you That's want me. That's a scrap bowl. Okay. And I'll save all that and use it in something else. Um, if you have, if you or someone that's going to be eating it have that gene where 
cilantro doesn't taste good to you, you could just leave it out all together or you could separate it and put you could put parsley in it instead of okay yeah yeah where's that big here we go the big knife come on chop this up but if you do like cilantro i do think cilantro is a very important part of it you too isn't that weird that some people it it, it really does taste like soap to some people it's so interesting Isn't because some it? people say no i don't know that about I think any other food taste buds change because some people say oh growing up I just hated radishes, and 20 years later, yes. they'll bite into a radish. Oh, yes. that's not bad. So do you think taste buds I do. Uh, change? I do. Interesting. Because I used to like most everything growing up, but there were a few things, and some of them I like now. I read one time, always taste something at least three times in your life, like give some time between them. If you don't like them, wait and try them again. And before you can say that you truly don't care for it. Okay. Because some people swear up and down, I could never eat a. Pop -pop. Yeah, yeah. But we don't have much like that, do we? <laughs> well, I'm not crazy about mushrooms. You're not, but you eat them. You're, uh, but you're right. You used not to sneak, your choice. sneak them into the I did. recipes. I did. Chop them up fine. Fool the husband. I um, did. It was kind of fun. <laughs> I, but I just don't like a big slice yeah. of. Ugh. Yeah, I fixed it forever in foods that you ate that you didn't know. And I just always made sure that it was very small pieces <laughs> and very well done pieces of mushrooms. All right, so it's better if you make this, what, the day before somebody's coming? Uh, a few or hours, hours before. And then you refrigerate it or just leave it on the counter? No, you have to refrigerate Refrigerate that and then uh, it will not mold. Meld. But meld. <laughs> Those are different words apparently. It's, it is important. Shall we try them out? Yeah, let's try it and see. Also, sometimes I add, I don't think I got it out, add, sometimes I add some apple cider vinegar. Huh. Uh, someone gave mean? me their recipe one time. It kind of takes the place of a lime, but I kind of like both of them in it. Okay. So I'm going to taste of it, see if I want some apple cider vinegar. You've made your own chips before, haven't you, if I'm I not have. mistaken? I have. But these are just so good and so easy to make. But chips have gotten expensive. You had me go to the... Again, that will change taste some. You had me go to the grocery aisle and to get I chips. took chips and I was shocked at They're how terrible. expensive they were. so expensive now. And there's not much to them, right? Uh-uh. Mm -mm. mm -hmm. It needs salt. Can you give me the salt? Mm -hmm. And I always like to taste it with the chip before I add more salt because most chips, you can buy chips that are unsalted, but most people don't. We don't. I'm try not to double dip. <laughs> Unless it's with True. Some, somebody you, you that kiss. Pepper, if you would. <laughs> Since it's just you and I don't know, maybe some other people would be eating this. I don't know. I hope Let's they don't. This. I'd like to, I'd like for us to eat. <laughs> <laughs> we can put away some salsa. All right, we want to say thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. When you like um, this video, it helps the algorithms. Uh, so. We are growing and uh, we continue to grow. It's because of you. And so thank you and suggest that. We suggest that to other people. You happy? I like it. <laughs>